Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, everybody. Great to see you again. And as you can see, Michelle Fabrica, our love coach, and Art Kirsch, my co-partner, founder of Celebrating Act 2, and I are ready to go this morning. Aren't we, Art? Yes, we are. <laughs> hello. hello, Michelle. How are you? Maybe. Maybe we're Hi. not. Hi. Good morning. Great to see you both. Yeah. Good it's morning, been a while. Art. Wake up. One of, one of the really great things about doing this show is that we get to interview a lot of people who are very interesting, like yourself. And uh, after a while, uh, we become friends. So that's one of the benefits of us doing this program for John and I, is that we make Very new good. friends, and that's a Very great good. benefit to us. Now, having played with those words, you're <laughs> actually going to talk to us today about friends with benefits, which has a totally different uh, meaning. <laughs> so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what friends with benefits are in uh, your world? I, I will, yeah. So this has kind of become a popular term, right? Friends with benefits. And and it, it can really mean a variety of things. And the idea really is to offer kind of a different form of relationship for people to enjoy. So maybe they get some of their needs met, whether it's, you know, physical, including maybe sexual, maybe emotional needs, companionship, whatever. And generally people think of it as like a way to get your sexual needs met. But I like to kind of expand a little bit to think that, you know, what is a friends with benefits relationship except something that is sort of consensually co-created between the people. So in a way, you know, how is that different from a regular relationship? Well, sometimes we have the assumption that a regular relationship leads to, you know, you know, a deepening over time. Some people call, there's a term called the relationship escalator where you're kind of riding up together and, you know, things are, you know, you're getting more and more involved and maybe it leads to partnership or some, you know, ongoing commitment, whatever. So in reality, a friends with benefits is kind of just a relationship, but it has the connotation that it's seen as something temporary or something as a trial or something just for the short, short term. Yeah. Booty call is what it's, <laughs> it's, Right. I mean, it's let's face it. That's what friends with benefits means to most people. It's booty call. It's sex unrelated to a relationship. It's just you you like each other. You like each other enough to have sex. Let's have sex a lot. But there's not most people don't think of, quote, friends with benefits as a relationship. Right. Right. Except, however, it actually obviously is a form of relationship. Right. It's yeah. just we're caught. We're kind of seeing it as something lighter, maybe something that, you know, no strings attached, perhaps. Um, maybe there's, you know, maybe there's not even much emotional connection there. Maybe it is like a booty call, like you said, or hooking up or whatever. So, I, of course, these are all options for people. And I, I really like to take a stand for, you know, consensual and ethical, you know, treatment of ourselves and others. So we, we need to be in communication about what exactly, what is this thing we're entering into? Because otherwise, if we have a friend that we enjoy and that we've been friends with, and then we decide to, you know, make it sexual, obviously things can get messy. And so it's really important to, you know, kind of go in with eyes open and have some communication around that, which I really encourage well, well it's you know, so be... in the, in the Act Two generation, which is uh, what uh, the audience that we're addressing, uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, this uh, uh, term "friends with benefits," uh, uh, yes, we imply sexual, but it, in fact, it could be emotional and other things as well. Is really something that seems to be an alternative to uh, what we grew up with, which well, you get together and you have a relationship and you get married, and. Uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, in, in a sec the Act Two generation, uh, whether it be a variety of children or uh, estate issues and all sorts of other things, marriage is not necessarily what, and maybe people want to maintain separate residences for, again, a variety of reasons, that it seems that these kind of relationships, even if it's monogamous, okay, it's not just, as John says for booty call, uh, with a variety of people, uh, might be an alternative that actually works best to make a relationship work. Is that the kind of thing that you're referring to? 
Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I mean, like this is just sort of a catch all phrase that can mean, you know, whatever the two people or more people, I guess you could say, uh, put together. But I think it is something to look at because we're not necessarily interested in getting married. We're not interested in maybe living with someone eventually. Maybe we just want someone to enjoy life with right now. And we want it to be, you know, we want to be kind and considerate to each other. So it's a, important to look at, you know, what are we doing here together? What's, what is, what is, what are we, why, you know? So there are different components, right? So there's, you know, what kind of intimacy are we going to have? Is it going to be, are certain activities, you know, on or off the table sexually or otherwise? Um, maybe, you know, I know people who get together and just, you know, get in bed and hug and, and cuddle naked together. And that's the extent of it. They're not interested in going any further than that. You know, is it okay to date other people? Can you be, you know, actively dating other people? Can one person be in a relationship as well? You know, so the question, there's so many different options around this that I really in, invite people to think, kind of go into it really consciously and have the communication because it, you know, you want to trust this person, right? If you're sharing your body with them, if you actually are being sexual, you want to have a talk around, you know, safe or safer sex and make sure, you know, that you're staying in communication with each other because, you know, feelings change. Feelings can change over time. And that's something that can be, um, you know, one person might want to deepen the relationship. The other person might, you know, wow, I'm actually enjoying this, but I'm actually dating someone. I'm looking to date someone else or meet someone who's more, um, you know, the right person for me, whatever. So it, it can be tricky and it can, and feelings can get involved. So I just, I want people to um, kind of, like I said, go in with eyes open and have, have some conversation around these different possibilities. You know, Michelle, um, I, uh, Art makes a really good point, And that is, the Act Two generation, those people over fifty and their and beyond, sixties, seventies, even eighties, um, really are in a different place in life. We're not necessarily looking for an escalator up. <laughs> um, we're often widowed or divorced or just single for whatever reason, and we're we're just looking for that friendship part of the relationship, as much as we're looking for the sexual side of the relationship. Um, and of course, at different ages, uh, depending on your where you are in your age, you will have different sexual needs. And and satisfying sex might mean completely different things to somebody in their 80s than it would to somebody in their 60s. Um, but at any age, at any situation, the friends with benefits is still an emotional connection, even though we tend to think of it as, or I tend to think of it as the traditional booty call sex without emotion. Um, but you can't have sex without emotion. I don't think anyway, personally. And the problem I can see is that, as you were just pointing out a minute ago, it's the, it's the communication, it's the evenness it's the are we both in this at the same time for the same reason in the same way and are we ag agreeing to continue in this manner and what happens when i i change my mind or my emotions change you know what i thought was a great idea before doesn't you know i feel now i'm feeling used mm, right I mean, I think exactly. I think that it's it's going to be dynamic, right? It's going to change over time. So that's why it's really important to kind of maybe have the agreement that you're going to stay in communication around things. So as things change, as things come up, oh, I've started to get to know someone new and, you know, he's really a great match for me. And so it might be that I want to change this or it might be something like I'm starting to really have feelings for you and I don't know if you do, but you know, I'm wondering how this can continue if you're not quite on that same page. Maybe it's going to be too painful to continue to get together with you if you're not interested in the same kind of relationship I want to. Now, we don't have to be exactly wanting the same things at the same time, but we have to be aware that, you know, things could change and to be really, um, I think it's important to, like I said, stay transparent and honest upfront about how things are changing. Maybe you reevaluate things regularly, you know, and, um, you know, however long, some of our relationships can go on 
you know, this can go on for a really long time. Sometimes you're recently divorced and you just want to have someone to, to be with and to have companionship and go, you know, well, COVID, of course, but, you know, go to movies or whatever, go to sure. dinner and have, have sex afterwards or cuddle afterwards or whatever. And so there's this beautiful possibility that people can have together as long as we're staying in, you know, communication, staying um, connected that way. So it, it and it and actually some things can deepen into something amazing and you can, you know, end up being con- staying connected. So I, I think it's um, I mean, I, I think it's a great concept. And I think I want to invite people to hold it in whatever way it works for them. And some people might be like, you know what? It's not going to work for me. I'm going to get too close with someone. And I really like this person. I don't want to ruin the friendship that we have. And, um, you know, that is a risk, right? Because um, feelings can change. Yeah. Well, I want yeah. to say that uh, the uh, Celebrating Act 2 audience, uh, uh, especially when we're speaking with you, uh, can expect that we can have frank, open conversations about things that might be comfortable or uncomfortable, but that are really a part of a lot of our worlds, uh, if not sure. everybody's worlds. and should be aware of because our situations change. So uh, to use a play on words, I would like to say that uh, it's wonderful that one of the benefits of being part of the Celebrating Act 2 audience and participation is that we have the benefit of your friendship. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, yeah. And um, I guess one thing I want to mention too is that the other thing that I didn't um, touch on is that you also might decide is this private? Is this something that nobody knows about? Oh. Or is it something that other people know about? Do you share only a few people maybe know, oh yeah, they're they're friends with benefits, or do you want to not, you know, keep it on the down low because maybe you're dating and you don't want people to know right. it or whatever. So obviously at some point, you know, if you're, you know, being sexual, you want to be, you know, sharing about those details in terms of your own sexual health and the sexual health of the people you're involved with. But but there is that other component too. And sometimes people prefer to just keep it private or yeah, your best friend knows or something like that. So yeah. another another axis or you know par- parameter to consider. Yeah, an important one, I think. Given you know, the wide diversity of people's mor- morals and uh, you know, religious views and, and everything else that comes into opinions, the judgments, right? Sure. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you again for uh, uh, enlightening us on this very interesting uh, subject matter, and I'm sure that over uh, the months and years to come, we'll delve into this more. But again, thank you for uh, being honest and open with us, and and uh, opening our eyes to uh, uh, things that many of us uh, encounter in our lives. Thank you. And we'll see you again soon, Michelle. Sounds great. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.